It's me, Jed. Sonny Jim. Sadly, Margot Bryant, who played that marvellous character, Minnie Caldwell, is no longer with us. This is where we met, on this street all those years ago, when I was destitute. And she took me in, like the good Samaritan she was. And we got on like a house on fire. I set the cooker alight. You want to knock harder, love? You what? Harder on the knocker. Mrs. Tanner oversleeps sometimes. Oh, I see what you mean. No, uh, I've, uh, I've been in and uh, I've come out again. Oh, I see. Oh, well, it is a bit early for visiting. I expect she was in hurry. You're dead right there. In hurry to see the back of me. And after all I've done for that kid and all, there's no gratitude, is there? Oh, are you in trouble then? I'm in dead lumber. Oh, it's not now I'm bothered about. Oh, I am feeling a bit chilly. No, it's the night time that worries me. It's very damp under that viaduct, you know, and the noise of the trains keeps me awake. Oh, dear. It's cold and all, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, don't you go worrying about me, love. I'll be all right. I mean, I could try the red wreck, but the forms are a bit hard. And then again, it's so exposed, isn't it? Still, not so worry. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I don't reckon I'll be here much longer. Oh, that's a dreadful <coughs> cough you've got. It's not the cough that carries you off. It's the coffin they carry you off in. Oh, now you mustn't say things like that. You'd think I'd be on their conscience, wouldn't you? After all I've done. No. No, I can't expect it, can I? I mean, I've got to make my own way in the world. It's only a small room. What's that then? Miss Bear bedroom. It's not very modern, but at least it's comfy. Oh, you mean I can come in and lie down for a minute? I mean, you've found yourself lodgings. Well, for the time being, anyway. Come along and we'll settle it over a nice hot cup of tea. <coughs> Here we are. The Red Lion. Where many used to meet her mates, Ina and Martha. Where they used to drink all that mugged out. And they used to talk about, uh, Solving the problems of the street and solving the problems of the world. And sometimes they used to talk about nothing at all. Brilliantly. My God. 1964, eh? Three right chickens, aren't they? You know, it's 20, 24 years since we was on munitions. Aye. I was never very good at acetylene welding. Do you remember when we sang all Lang Syne in Albert Square, all six of us? 1938. And my Alfred stood on the steps of Robert Field's statue with your stone martin round his neck. Oh, well, we'll have to see what this year brings. Well, there's one good thing anyway. We've got the babies to look forward to. You what? The babies, Martha. What babies? Oh, there's five of them. There's the Queen, Margaret Rose, the Duchess of Kent, and Princess Alexandra. I can always tell they cancel their engagements. That's only four. Pardon? That's only four. You said five. Who else is expected? Mrs. Higgins in March. Who's Mrs. Higgins? Has she cancelled her engagements or no? I don't think so, Ina. Uh, she's the one I sit next to in Laundrette. I used to say to Margot that we could have a scene about the price of tea and get loud. Well, the scriptwriters used to say that. We don't need to think about scenes for you. You three, we can say anything. And as soon as they see those three chairs around the table, that's it. And you can make it funny without meaning to, just by being ordinary. Violet and I, we liked her when she didn't say much because she was so funny. With this odd little gem she dropped once in a blue moon when she was about five paces behind us all. But then when she started to get loud, she liked it. Of course she did, we all do. But uh, we didn't think it was as funny. Was she a funny actress? No, I think she was just natural with it. It was the gormless way it came out. Thank you. 
You know, the more I think why, the way Enos behaved, the madder I get. I wouldn't care, but I know for a fact that she, in her own mind, she thinks she's beautiful. Oh, I wouldn't say beautiful, but she's a bonny woman. Bonny? Enos Sharple's face is so ugly, it wouldn't make ear rolls. I've only met one woman plainer than her, and that's our Jessie. Oh, but your poor Jessie can't help it. Well, I mean, it isn't many women as fall through a garage roof. Well, is it? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Our Lily's having her extension. What's that? It's a glass and cedar wood sun lounge behind the wash house. Fancy. Yeah, they send them out in sections, and our Lily's will from their postman are going to erect it together. That's another thing Ina's jealous of. What? My son-in-law. Have you ever seen her? No, come to think of it, I don't think I have. No, you wouldn't have. She keeps them very dark. Mind you, that's one thing I can't blame her for. Oh, why? Ooh, they're putrid. Her Madge is married to a man who's a verger. He breeds rabbits in the house. Well, you can imagine. What does Vera's husband do? Nothing if he can help it. Mind you, that's better than her first husband. He weren't all there. Evening. I'm the bitter. Pardon? You heard, I don't boil my cabbages for ice. Well, you know your own mind. You might be wondering, Mrs. Walker, why one of your best mild and brown ale customers is suddenly eating the dark bitter. Well, I'll tell you, my world has fallen in ruins. Oh, dear, that'll be one and four. One and four? And you mean to tell me people play that much for draft beer every day in the week? They do. Well, all I can say is I hope it's not habit farming. On your feet, Minnie Caldwell. I don't want to fight with anybody. Well, you'll be straight in one if you don't get up out of my seat. Yes, I, I liked her. We had rows. Oh, we had our ups and downs. I once told her she was ru ruder than Nina Sharples was ever meant to be. Because she'd been rude to some people that had come to watch an episode. And they'd said, hello, Minnie, my flower. And she said, how dare you call me Minnie, you oaf. And I was, I was livid when I got in the dressing room. I said, Mark O'Brien, you're ruder than Nina Sharples was ever meant to be. And with that, I swept off. Oh, Ina, I am sorry. I am, really. Why should you be sorry? It's an ill bit that doesn't blow somebody some good. What, whatever do you mean by that? Well, I reckon when they get me out, the job's yours. You're not going to pretend you're sorry about that. Oh, Ina, what a wicked thing to say. There's nothing wicked about it. It's true what I say. You're only to put up a front for me, Minnie Cole. We've known one another too long. Oh, you've got a bitter, cruel tongue, Ina Sharp, as you always have had. Oh, stop wailing, woman. You know, I can't stand it. Well, if you want to know what I really think, it's your tongue you've got to thank for the mess that you're in now. Go on, go on, join the chorus. Well, you're so nasty and bad-tempered with folk. It's small wonder if they want to see the back of you. Right. You've got to see the back of me right now because I've somewhat better to do than sit here listening to you wittering. And you can believe what you think about me. Just like everybody else. Oh, Bobby. It's a good job I haven't got your claws because what I wouldn't like to do to her sometimes. And I was sitting across there, you know, I've got a seat across the road there, a bus, waiting for a bus one day, and uh, two ladies came and sat down and one said to them, no, Martha Longer, who used to be. She lives there in that blue house. And I said, oh, really? Oh, you'd think she'd have a better house than that, wouldn't you? And she said, oh, it's beautiful inside. She says, you want to see the lovely carpet she's got. I thought, how the hell is she seeing my carpet? <laughs> so they, they take an interest. And they, these were two typical minis. Well, I'd noticed that whenever you got a... Uh tough old viragos like Ina, they always had henchmen. They generally had a talkative one that could be shouted down, and then there was always a silent one who nodded but was a bit rebellious. I can even remember a very earliest line. You was talking about Christmas cards. Oh, yes. I've not sent our bell one this year. How many have you had so far? Four and a calendar. I like a nice calendar. There's a picture of a Scotty dog with a pipe in his mouth and a bit of lucky heather gummed on, you know. How many have you had, Minnie? Just one from the vet. <laughs> you see, Margot was balmy about cats. A friend of mine once telephoned me and said, now I've seen everything. I've seen your Minnie Caldwell on holiday in uh, Venice feeding stray cats from a huge pile of tins wearing a mink coat. So I said to her, Margot, I didn't know you'd got a mink coat. And she said, oh, she said, that's nothing. She said, I've got a tiger's whisker. And what's more, I went in the cage to get it. 
And so, anything that had four legs and whiskers, well, obviously we couldn't give her a tiger, so we gave her Bobby. I found him. Who? A Bobby. Only I can't quite reach him. He's up on the wall. Well, that's all right, love. I'll get him. Where is he? Uh, just outside. I'll show you. Right. You must be joking, of course. Hang on, Bobby. Ah! Stanley's coming. Right, I'll be all then, Batman. Oh, Bobby, you shouldn't have done that, you know. Now, keep still. You mustn't move it. I want you to fall off the wall. <laughs> Oh, Bobby, oh, Bobby, you worry about old Stanley, old Stanley. Hang on to the bottom of the ladder, will you? Uh, is it safe in your jacket? I'll say he is. Why didn't he cut his flipping claws? I feel he's all got a fucking inside me. Hang on, will you? Oh, Bobby, I know what you want. Some nice hot milk. Well, I'll go and get you some. Oh, is he all right? He hasn't been too frightened, No, has well, he? I've been frightened. Though. Look, do me a favour, will you, in the future? Keep him on a chain or something, will you? I wouldn't go through this all again for a thousand nicker. Oh, now, come on, Bobby. I've got you some nice hot milk. Oh, there, now, you're safe and sound at home now. Oh. What? That's not Bobby. You've got the wrong cat. Margot was crazy about cats as well. Arlene Derbyshire, her best friend, told me a story. When Arlene had her first baby, she thought she'd have to dress it up in a cat skin before she could show it to Margot. <laughs> I think she did as well. It's certainly true. She did project a, a sort of female W.C. Feels attitude, you know. I do like children, yes, on toast, but I was unbelievably touched when she arrived one day and almost in a sort of shame-faced way, she said, um, I, I've made you this. And um, she, she had made me this little shirt for him, you see which nobody would ever believe. I mean, I, I, as you can see, I have treasured it now for 20 years and she'll always treasure it because uh, it was one of the loveliest presents I was ever given. But, uh, uh, but nobody would believe that because uh, they'd say, never in a million years would Margot make a shirt for a child, you know, a cat, yes, but... Um, That's a pretty dress, Mrs. Caldwell. Uh, oh, it's my special dress. I'm wearing it tomorrow night. Uh, what does the colour remind you of? Well, it's a sort of dark green. Mm. Sunny Jim. That's what it reminds me of. I wore it at that birthday party he gave for me, which turned out to be his going away party. Where was it he was going? To prison, actually. Ina always said it was my coming out and his going in party. Going where? Uh, New Brighton now. Bill wants me to have a look at this uh, mock auction. His mates running that, you know. I see. When do you have to go? Uh, tonight, ma. Now. Right this minute? Yeah, well, Jed did uh, promise to give me a hand out, you see, Mrs. Caldwell. Yes. What's up? Community and singing. I thought you'd better leave me up to roll me over in the clover. But... Ah, come on, Jed. Get conducting. Hey, you're having a bad job, boys, aren't you? What do you mean? Wanting rude songs. No stand-up, you know. Jack, and just imagine these three. No, no, crude. Come on, Jed. Sonny Jim's not stopping. Why? Where are you going? Well, he asked to help a friend at New Brighton. There'll be other birthdays. I'll, uh, I'll say to then, ma. Yes, Sonny Jim. What's the funeral for? What funeral? Everybody's usually delighted when he gets out from under their feet for a couple of hours. Valerie? Oh, I'm only joking, love. What's the matter? Oh, go on, Jed. We'd better get cracking. Uh, enjoy yourself, love, and no club dancing on Mr. Walker's table now. No. There's a good girl. Oh, I've got something for you, Sonny Jim. Oh, it's your birthday, ma. Yes, well, that's for you. Uh, for nothing. Well, for everything, really. I know you like a nice cap. It's lovely, that nice smashing. Well, let's see you smile, then. Enjoy yourself now. Ta-ra, Sonny Jim. Ta-ra, Ma. Take care. Come on, Ma. Ta-ra, Jim. Hey, you don't kiss me every time you just go out for five minutes. Oh, sure up, Sheila. Talking dead loud. Sonny Jim was the first of Minnie's lodgers. He loved her, protected her, would have killed for her, and I'm sure she would have done the same for him. Margot liked the relationship because it, it gave her lots of opportunities to play comedy and pathos, something she was smashing at. 
We had some really nice scenes together. And when Jed finally left, he sent his best mate along to keep her company. Oh, by God, he could eat. 18 stone, there to strengthen the bed. Hello. You must be Mrs. Caldwell, then. I don't think I know you. No, no, you don't know. But you were expecting a friend of mine, weren't you? A very old friend of yours and all. Oh, I see. Uh, can't he... No. No, unexpectedly detained. Oh, what a shame. Oh. A fella called Jed Stone. Do you know him, do you? <laughs> I know Jed Stone. It's not something I'd boast about, though. Well, he, he was going to spend Christmas here, Lena. Who was he? Well, he asked me to make his apologies, like, and he sends you the very best greetings of the season. Oh, and a Merry Christmas to the cat, eh, Bobby. Minnie was always skint, but she was a very generous person. She gave her last shilling to anybody, but she was a little devil. Sometimes it was a bookmaker. Westminster, followed by Chappie's Folly, Fair Fame, Night Errant and Susan's Boy. Bringing up the rear is Applejack, Pull It, Nice Time, and last is Bright Harry. As they near the three fell on post, it's still Westminster, Chappie's Folly, and Night Errant has moved in. Near that it whist drive. Well, that's to show you that I'm not going to mend my ways. They are. You said it. Mend your ways. What's that cat doing in my chair? You're always saying wicked things about Bobby, but anyway, I'm not going to let you bully me anymore. Will you shift that mug here, shall I? Well, you, you needn't have to sit on that chair. Oh, don't stop being childish, Minnie Colwell. Ina, you've been interfering with my habits. You're bad habits, yes, I have. Well, you say they're bad, but I like them. Not to your credit, you know. And interfering isn't to yours. You're not that good at it anymore, you know. What's that supposed to mean? Well, why do you have to have Albert Tatlock to help you to run the centre? Because you went round telling tales. Oh, you see, you don't like that. And yet you're doing the same to me. You're trying to prove a point? Yes. I suppose you've placed your bet as usual today. Well, Mr Lewis was in a very awkward position. Yes, I know. I put him there. A and he didn't want to forego my credit. Oh, no, he just wanted to fleece you like all the rest of them, only you're too dim to realise the fact. But, Ina, I do realise that I must lose some of the time. Hey, Minnie Colwell. What? Why do you do it then? Oh, I'm sorry. I just can't explain. No, addicts never can. Now, oh, don't you use that word to me because you're an addict too. You always have to be the one on the top and I'm supposed to be the one underneath your thumb. Only I'm going to put a stop to that once and for all. And I'm not coming to tea on Thursday and I'm not going with you to the sales. Oh, so that's how I oppress you. That's how I show my lust for power. You stopped me on my lucky day. And if I'd won, I would have treated you. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, well, Bobby understands anyway. Bobby knows that I had a dream last night. Now, what are you babbling about? I'm sorry, Ina, but it's finished. Not anymore. <sighs> Blessed cat. Minnie lived alone most of the time. I mean, she had lodges that would come in and go. She had Bobby the cat. But strangely enough, she started to get a few proposals. I mean, some of the characters round here had their eyes on number five as a possible marital residence. I don't think I quite follow you. Well, I'm putting it as plain as I can. Put in what? That on financial grounds and on companionship grounds, Betty Turpin wasn't all that much wrong after all. Albert Tatlock, are you asking me to marry you? Well, I'm not suggesting we should live in sin. Well, what do you say? I think uh, I'll go and put the kettle on. <laughs> oh. A lot of landlords and landladies have cold time in this famous pub. So I think it's only fitting that the first great landlady, Doris Bead, Annie Walker, should have the final word. She always did. Those three old girls could sit in the snug I talk about anything, I mean, something important or something absolutely silly. And the humour came from the three different approaches. It was done with such genuine affection, wasn't it? As it should be, the, the three characters and, oh, well, you know, delightful. My heart warmed to Victoria Wood for remembering, as she obviously did. You shouldn't have talked to Albert like that. He is my fiancé, don't forget. Yes, you know, fancy, if your fiancé is likely to remain if you give him all the privileges without the responsibilities. What do you mean? I mean, you want to get him to the altar before you start taking his sewing in. What fellow's going to bother getting wet when he can get all his own comforts with the price of an engagement ring? And he hasn't even bought you that yet. You've got a nasty, cruel tongue. I've told you that before. Yes, well, I'm telling you, 
You want to watch yourself. He's already put the wedding off twice, you know. No, he hasn't. You wanted to get married at Christmas. He said Easter. Now he's talking about putting it off until this development business is settled. Well, I think it's quite right. It's only common sense to wait and see what's going to happen to our homes before we take any big step. You know what's going to happen to you, don't you? You're going to finish up like Bertha Butterfield on Viaduct Street. 33 years she was going with Harry Thomason, and her name was still Butterfield when she washed him and laid him out. And Minnie was meek and docile, rather sweet, easily squashed, right? Margot was very sophisticated, rather arrogant, and could be very provocative. <laughs> so they were a complete contrast. Well, Greta Garbo. Oh, say, so you're back then. I'll be back two days if you're interested. Well, well I've been out of sorts. Oh, what with? Well, um, I've had a cold. You must be getting soft in your old age. Oh, yeah, maybe I am. And maybe I'm not as green as I'm cabbage looking, so I'll thank you to stop spinning fairy stories and tell me what's been exactly going on round here, as though I haven't already guessed. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about that fancy fireplace you've had fitted downstairs, the one you can't afford a fire for because you've skinned yourself paying for it. Well, it's my business what to do with my own money. It's everybody's business when you're frightened us all to death by locking the door and taking to your bed for no good reason. There was a very good reason. I had no money for clothes, and I won't buy on tick, and this would be on place. I could get warm. Well, how come you've got no money at this time of the year week? Oh, it's these decimals. I've tried to think decimal, and then I get all mixed up, and the, the bill came for the grate, and well, it, it, it took all my money. Well, couldn't you have asked Len Fairclough to wait for his money? Oh, I've never owed any money in my life. Uh, oh, well, uh, only just at that once. And I'm not going to start now. Here. No, I, I can't accept charity. I'm not offering any. Here. And I want that back as soon as the post office opens next pension day. Eee, dear me, it seems to me you haven't got the brains you were born with. Well, I know what I have got. What? My pride. She was in the first two episodes, the very first week that went out. And she was just written in for that week, you see. And of course, always exciting starting a new thing. Anyhow. We'd finished, thankfully, and she came to my dressing room and uh, she said, I've come to say goodbye. And she wasn't looking one little bit arrogant. She was looking very sad. So I said, oh, Margot, what nonsense you're becoming again. You were very, very good, which she was. And she said, uh, was I really? And she welled over with tears. It's for a little bit of money there, wasn't there? I never know. Oh, let's see. Oh, yes, some sweet for dumplings she'll expect in the broth. She can eat four the size of oranges at one sitting. It's a sight to behold. Ina, if you're going to make jokes at my expense, I'll wait outside. I'm not what they call straight man, you know. Margot Bryant, who played Minnie Caldwell for 14 years, died on January the 2nd, 1988, age 90.